Hey friends, good afternoon, happy Tuesday. I am Jenny with Roots and Wings Furniture, where I'm helping you transform your house into a home one project at a time. Let me tell you what we've got going on today and what the noise is. Hold on, it's gonna keep going on. I'm working on a DIY project in my laundry room today. I'm gonna put a wood wall right here over this gray and I'm gonna show you how to do it. So in case you wanna do it in your home or you have a spot you'd like an accent wall, we're gonna nail it up and get going here. That is the air compressor. It's gonna keep popping on as we go throughout the video because I'm using my nail gun. So um, hold tight, you're just gonna to have to bear with me on the sound. That's what happens when you work with power tools, right? But I thought we would have fun doing this together. So. Let me show you what we're working with and a little bit of what I've done to prep so far, and then we will jump right in. Hi, Patricia. Hi, Rebecca. How are you? I'm sorry, I forgot to send out a notification that I was going live. Sorry, but I see a lot of you coming on anyways, which is awesome. Okay, so I'm in my laundry room. It is kind of part of the entryway makeover, which is the next step in my house. And I'm so excited to actually have a laundry room. This is the first time I've ever had one. So it feels like just a fun place to decorate and do something a little bit different. And I can go a little bit crazy when you have small walls, right? It's easier to do weird things or fun things, out of the box things when you've got something um, that's just small. So it's not a lot of space. Not that this is out of the box. You know what I mean. An accent wall is really what we're doing. So what I've done so far, my vision for this room um, is, oh, Diana, come back later, this will be here. No problem, enjoy your lunch. What I've got going on here, I'm gonna put a wood wall behind these cabinets that are just white, so it's gonna go down a little bit behind my washer and dryer, and then that little speck of wall up there at the top too. And it's just gonna be an accent wall to the rest of the room. This room is gonna be painted this color you can see here in the corner. Let me, let me, let me show you. I am super excited about this color, but I haven't painted this room yet. And I don't know how the lighting is gonna translate. Oh, it translates it well. This is called Knoxville Gray. It is a Benjamin Moore color, and it is a beautiful, I'm going to say dark teal. It seems like it runs green in some lights and blue in the other, but this is going to be the rest of the room with the accent wall of wood. So I think it's going to really pop and be kind of fun and cool. So I'm excited. Thanks, Gina. Thanks for telling me happy birthday. I did have a happy birthday. It was a great, great week last week. Okay. So, so far what I've done, I painted the wall gray. The reason being, we're going to have a little bit of gapping between the boards, not even on purpose, um, but you can sometimes see a little space be behind the board, so we don't want the white wall to show up behind there. And then as the wood is inside and it settles, it'll dry a little bit and shrink. So there's a potential that the, uh, the gaps between the wood will look a little bit bigger. Not that it will look bad, but just that you'd be able to see the color behind it. So what I did, what I did, I had a bunch of these little samples of paint from around the house and I just combined them. Just combined them into a jar from the kitchen, used up all my little samples and got some version of a dark gray color. You could use a dark gray, you could use black, a uh, dark brown, anything like that that's just gonna be um, kind of fade in the background, you're not really gonna be able to tell. So don't overthink the gray color behind the wall. Any old color will work just fine. Then, here's the fun part. This is the wood that I'm gonna use. I decided to use a product at Home Depot called Weber, it's by Weber Lumber, and it is the weathered wood, weathered wood wall. Say that five times fast. Weber Lumber weather wood wall. Each box is about 25 bucks. It's 10 square feet a box. This is not an ad or anything, but I've been eyeing this for quite a while. It kind of comes in a variation of colors, so it's nice because it's this kind of rough weathered wood. It's got some texture to it they've already stained it for you, so you don't have to mess with the colors. You just don't even have to mess with it. All we're gonna do is nail it up to the wall, and we are gonna have an awesome looking wall in no time flat. So, 
not on this project, but on another one, I priced out the wood versus me buying rough cut lumber and painting it or staining it. And the time it would take me to do that, I felt like the price was good. So that's that was my takeaway. The price is good, it's fair. I've done this before with pallet wood, which of course would be completely free if you could find pallets. You could cut up your pallets and you could start with free wood. Feel free to think outside the box here. This is just one way to do it if you don't wanna mess with cutting a lot or painting, things like that. We will have to do a little bit of cutting, but not too bad. It comes all one length in a box. So I took one box and cut it up into different lengths. I did some half sizes, I did some quarter sizes, I just kind of went random with my saw. So we've got some short boards and we've got the long boards and we are just going to alternate them until we get a really cool look that we want, okay? Enough chat, are we ready to start? We've got this. Hi Carrie, how are you? You guys like my uh, varsity tennis sweatshirt from high school? Hmm? This is what I paint in, all of my old like high school and college shirts. I think, I think I need to bring you in closer. We've gotta get a little bit closer. We're gonna see, I know the lighting is not great in the laundry room, I apologize for that. We're gonna do the best we can. We're gonna see if we can get in closer, there we go. Okay, I'm gonna start on one side here in the corner. I am not, here's what I'm not gonna do. I'm not gonna glue these boards to the wall for a couple reasons. I might change my mind later on and I don't wanna have to tear out drywall to get the boards off the wall. So I am not gonna use liquid nails to attach them to the wall. I'm just gonna use my nail gun. That way if I change my mind in six months, I only have a few uh, nail holes to patch, not a whole entire wall, right? And um, nail, nails are gonna be just enough. It's gonna hold it up fine. No problem. I have my nail gun attached to my compressor, and then I'm going to use nails that are an inch and a half. They are that big. This um, size, for whatever reason, an inch and a half is what I always have on hand. I seem to be using this size all the time. And you can see, let me show you, it'll go through the board and then um, hold plenty into the wall. So all this will be in the wall and it's gonna work just fine. Does that make sense? Hey Shelby, hey Katie. Okay, that's the air compressor. It's just gonna go on and off as we chat. Sorry for the noise, but I did get it out in the garage, so it's not so bad, right? Okay, I'm gonna start the first row with a long board and then we are just gonna alternate and go randomly um, as we go. So this isn't gonna take long, right? Just grab a piece. It's going to butt up under the cabinet and make it nice and tight. I'm going to do two nails on either side and two in the middle. And that's it. There, you see it? There it is. The first board is up. So, if you don't have a nail gun, you should get a nail gun. This thing changed our DIY life. I'm not even joking. This is not scary. We are not gonna shoot our fingers. Be aware of where your fingers are, but I have yet to put a nail through my finger and I've used this a whole lot. So don't be, a, don't be afraid of your nail gun. No, Gina, you don't have to catch a stud. This is, um, it is in there just fine and it's not gonna go anywhere. Here's my test, here's my proof. The old house, we did a whole bathroom. I did a bathroom of pallet, wa pallet wood on the wall, only with nails, didn't hit studs. It stayed up there just fine. They never went anywhere. So you are just fine to go for it. If this was a high use, high traffic area, like, I can't even think of an example. If you were gonna screw a bunch of hooks into the back of a wall, you really needed, I don't know. If you screw anything into this, you're gonna need to hit a stud. Like the wood on the wall itself isn't gonna hold it. But I can't think of any reason why you'd really need to hit a stud. Does that make sense? Nancy, this is a Hitachi, Hitachi nail gun. I gave you the link above to my Amazon shop and it should be there for you, the same brand that I have. So I 
butted this up against the bottom and did two nails on either side. And all I'm going to do, friends, is just randomly start grabbing colors and start going for it. There is, I think, about three variations of color, kind of a lighter, medium, and dark. So I'll just make sure I like the way it looks. I'm going to work my way over here to the cabinet. There we go. And then this little space here, what I'll have to do is just measure and cut when we get to where um, we need some smaller lengths, if that makes sense. I'm not going to do that on camera. We're not going to be cutting wood today, but we'll just start our way and work over, okay? Yeah, maybe in a mudroom, Katie. Maybe so. All right. So we did a long one, short one. Let's do another long one. April, I love my nail gun. Here we go. So I'm at an outlet already. I'm sorry, you can't see. Okay, I'm out of outlet here. What I'm gonna need to do is get an extender box for my outlet. The extender box is gonna bring the outlet out so it sticks out from the wood and I can reattach um, my outlet and my switch plate right on top of the wood, okay? So I am gonna leave, if I attach this board here, I'm gonna cover the screw. I'm gonna leave this off just for now so I can come back and do that in a little bit. Um, but that's all that I would do, just make some cuts around your switch plate so you can reattach your hardware, your, what is this? Make your cuts around your outlet so you can reattach your switch plate later. That's what I wanted to say. So we'll leave this. What I'm going to do is just leave one gap, one width, and leave that off. Come into the I don't like skipping a whole row, but you can if you need to. Use it as a spacer. There we go. Can we see what we're doing here? There we go. So we're all ready. We're at the level of the washer and dryer. I'm going to go down just another row or two. So it's not super obvious. I just stopped right there. I'm also going to be hanging a shelf here about this level just for a little bit of extra storage. Um, so that will be covering, again, any little gaps or imperfections there. We're going to be we're going to use this room for as much storage as possible. Let's come down here. There we go. What do y'all think so far? Isn't that fun? Gina, I am not concerned about hitting electrical behind the wall. So I know that this, this box is here, um, and then these nails are not going deep enough into the wall that I should hit anything like that. So I am not worried about that. I don't know if I should be, but I'm not worried about it, okay? Denise, the wood is called Weber Lumber. It is their weathered wood wall, and the only place I know you can get it is at Home Depot. 
They have other products, probably similar ones at other hardware stores, um, but that is the only place I've seen that you can buy it right now. Yes, maybe Lowe's has it. For sure. Temporary over wallpaper. Okay, so here's another idea, guys, that I've done before. The other thing I've done, and this was so cheap, was cedar, cedar shake, plain, uh, hold on, cedar shingles. So it has um, a lot more texture to it, but it's another really cool look. And I did an entire wall for like 20 bucks. Same thing, you would just nail it in, make sure it stays, and then if you ever have to remove it, you would just have to fill the holes in the wall. So. Weber. April, it's W-E-A-B-E-R. Um, Weber Lumber. They are on Facebook. They've got some ideas and stuff going on on Facebook. But like I say, I don't know of anywhere else that you can buy it. So they're a local Pennsylvania company. So there's that. Let's keep going. So I'm working over here above my sink. Let's see where we're at here. I'm going to go ahead and fill in this space. Let's get a long one. Here we can see this one has a little bit of a uh, little more weathering to it and there's a crack here. The only reason I don't mind the crack is because I've painted the back wall dark gray so you almost don't notice it at all when you're looking at it because the back of it is dark gray. So keep that in mind. That's why I painted the back wall. love doing wood walls like this because it's kind of like a puzzle piece. We're just fitting the pieces together and then you get almost instant gratification with how quick it goes up. I love doing wood walls. This is an 18 gauge nail gun um, and I really like it because you can put in, I think it goes 5 eighths to 2 inches uh, nail so that's a you know real small nail to a longer one and um, I have had this We've had this for a couple years and it's a great nail gun, not very expensive. So, highly recommend this thing. Highly. Hello, Debbie. Yes, Brooke, that's a great idea. Shingles are lighter, they're super light. Shingles were almost harder to nail into because it would go right through. They're just lightweight um, and harder to do. Tack for posters would be awesome. The other thing to check out, I have not ordered it yet, but they do make removable wallpaper. I've seen that on Amazon, and they do have a pattern that's a weathered wall pattern that looks kind of like this, but it's some kind of giant sticker almost that I believe you could put up, and it's supposedly very easy to remove. The only thing I've heard is if you live in a place, I think read the reviews. There was something about if you lived in a cold climate, um, the paper would might start coming off the wall. So check the reviews, but it looks super cool. I almost ordered that for um, my powder room. All right, here's where we're at. We're still going, I'm gonna keep going. So I've just got this little gap here, um, and then maybe we'll try and go up high. We'll see if you can see up there. Let's see. And right above my sink, right here, is where this sweet little sign is going to go. It says wash and dry. It's an old washboard. Do you see that? I know it's backwards, but here we go. Isn't that cute? So that's going to hang right above the sink and I think help with some of the splashes from the sink in the water. Yes, 
Shayna, that's right. These are all the same. They are all the same width board. They come all in the same length. And then I just cut one box of them in half in quarters just so I would have a variation. I'm just putting it up quite randomly um, along my board to give it um, some dimension and a little bit of a different look. They have a slightly different width to them and that will give it a little bit of texture. Not, not a lot, just a little bit. I just noticed on a few. So let's see, where are we at? Let's Just enough room for me to sneak that behind the sink. Just good. Finish up this row. Okay. So that's where I'm going to need some cuts. That's where I'm going to need some cuts. But we can start up high. Can y'all see up there? Not very well. Nope, you're not going to be able to see that. What questions do you have? There's nowhere else for us to do this together. Do y'all know how to use a nail gun? Let's talk about this for a second. When you push into a board, I promise you these are not as scary as they you think that they are. And the first time we got them, it really changed our life. We built a bed for my son um, just with a hammer and nails. And every time we would go to hammer it, like another nail would pop out somewhere else. It was the most frustrating project ever. Shortly after that, we got one of these and it was awesome. So here's what we've got. When you press this piece right here into the wood, that is when your trigger is available to use. You cannot do anything with this until that front piece is pressed in. So that is a safety for you. Keep an eye on where your fingers are, obviously as you're holding things up. But when you press this in, then your trigger can be activated there. That's really all there is to it. Okay, when we're changing our, our nails out, all you do, there's usually um, some kind of clip here. You just clip it open and fill the nails in. You just slide right in here, load it up, and that's it. Not scary, right? This attaches to an air compressor, which um, other tools, you can use several different tools on an air compressor. The air compressor is loud, but it's not hard to use at all. It just attaches with an air hose like this. This is also where you would attach your staple gun. If you're doing any kind of upholstery or... Where else have I used my staple gun? Mostly for upholstery, but it is a great tool. You can shoot those staples in like nobody's business. So, highly recommend this for sure. This brand is a, a Hitachi brand. Uh, I think they are like 58 bucks on Amazon. The compressors are usually 100 or sometimes less. I don't think you need very much in the way of the compressor. Um, and then you just buy the tools separately. So. Best. Let me show you what kind of wood I'm using. It is called Weber, W-E-A-B-E-R, Lumber. It comes in three different colors in the box. So there's an, a light, a medium, and a dark. It's the weathered wood wall is what comes in this pack. They also have a whitewash version. I made a headboard out of the whitewash version. It's also very pretty. And um, I think for the cost of it, it's about equivalent to um, if you were to purchase the wood and stain it yourself, especially if you think about the time it would take to do that. Yeah, April, then this would be a great one. I really like it. Um, we've used it on tons and tons of projects for sure. medium color one there. So all I'm going to do when I fill my holes to measure is line up a piece in the gap and then just mark it. So I'll lay it on top here, flush against the cabinet, mark it here with a pencil or a pen, 
go cut it and then I know that that is exactly the length that I need to fill in my gaps and I'll just work piece by piece until I get it all put together. It'll take a little bit time. The cutting is the most time consuming part of this, um, but really otherwise it goes so quick. So that was not too bad, huh? I showed you how to do that in less than half an hour. Isn't that fun? I'm gonna do that little gap at the top, um, but otherwise I'm gonna be almost done. So now I'll get to paint the room and decorate it and all the super fun stuff. Not too bad for a laundry room. Yeah, the whitewash boards are really fun. I did one, if you search the website, rootsandwingsfurniture.com, shiplap, headboard, it was all done in the white wash wood and um, it turned out really pretty. So, you're welcome, Gina. Tracy, there is, um, I forgot to get it at the hardware store today so I can't show you. There is an extender box for um, for the outlet, so it'll actually fit right on top of the junction box that's there. It'll And then you get some longer screws, so it'll reattach to the wall. So your outlet will be sticking out, I don't know, half an inch more than it is right now. And then I'll be able to um, change out my outlets. I've been changing all my outlets from cream to white and reattach the switch plate. So I will, if I can remember, I'll take a picture of the, um, the extender box and I'll put it on my page when I go get it. So that's what we're going to do with the outlets. Yay. This is a great way to, to, if you have wallpaper on your walls, if you have texture you don't like, um, to cover up any imperfections in your wall. It goes so quick. All it is is a few nails and then we're done, right? Yes. Okay guys, that's what I have for you today. We are kind of transitioning. I decided to transition Try It Tuesday into more like DIY Tuesday. Honestly, I don't craft enough to do craft projects every Tuesday. Like, I don't craft once a week. So I thought it's a little more fun to do DIY projects together. We can do a little bit more hands-on with tools and um, things like that. And I thought that might be kind of fun. Yeah? Tell me what you think about that plan. Because that's the plan going forward. Thursday... Thursday this week we'll be working on furniture and I think the project we're working on is a steamer trunk. So that will be coming up next. Um, we'll throw craft projects in there. I saw that sad face. We'll throw them in there. Craft projects can be DIYing at the same time. Um, so we'll just kind of mix it up a little bit that way. Gina, what size compressor? I don't know. Let's go look. I can show you what it looks like. It's in the garage. Okay, the compressor that I have is a cobalt. It's sitting out there because it's, it's noisy. 135 max PSI is what it says. Most tools, when you buy a tool online, it will tell you what the pressure is needed for the tool. I think the nail gun is something like it doesn't, I don't know if it says on here. There you go. So on the nail gun, when you purchase it, this says pressure 70 to 120 PSI. So all you need to do is make sure your air compressor gets you enough pressure for the tool that you buy. That would be the only thing to check. I feel like most compressors are going to be made to work with the tools, but keep that in mind. So my air compressor is 135 max, and this is 70 to 120. I don't ever put it up to 120, but it has that capacity if you needed to do that. So, good question. Okay, guys, I hope you have an awesome rest of your Tuesday. Of course, I will share pictures when this is all done. I'm going to go saw some boards and get this finished up before everyone gets home from school. But hope you have an awesome Tuesday and a great rest of your week. We will be on later this week with some furniture projects. Um, until then, happy DIYing. See you guys later. Bye.